Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Zero number 351AA clear anodized aluminum automatic door bottom. Give you a look at it before I start explaining, describing. That's the seal material that you see in there. It's typical for it to run long for you to trim after installation. There's an end with a brass nut. We're going to call that the plunger. We're also going to say that this is the hinge side of the door. It's a long aluminum extrusion available in several different lengths. We'll talk about that more in a moment. Then you have the other side, which does not have that brass, uh, brass uh, nut or plunger, and we'll call this the lock side of the door. There is a link below this video, a couple of links, the first one's to the product brochure, which is a really nice document to look at because it shows this and Zero's sister products to it, okay? So it gives you a real nice way to be able to view this in comparison to similar items by Zero, and allows you to see the differences in the different types uh, and maybe refine your search for what you're looking for. The 351, is available in aluminum like this, clear anodized aluminum, and also dark bronze. Okay. This is available in several different lengths, and I will explain that in detail later, uh, why you should consider custom ordering a length should you need it, other than a standard length that we list. This is also surface mounted, and in the world of automatic door bottoms, there are three applications where you use them. Surface mount, semi-mortise, and then mortise. So this is a surface mount where it's going to literally surface mount to the face of the door. You have your semi-mortise, which is very similar to this, except that they'll take a router and route the face of the door and install this so it's flush. You can still see it, but it is flush to the face of the door, and that's a real nice design. Um, then there is mortised, which is the type that you still route in the bottom of the door, but it's, for all intents and purposes, concealed, especially when the door is open. You can't see it. And you can see very little of it even when the door is closed. Uh, you can see from that link to the uh, product brochure the different items that are used as inserts. Okay. Neoprene is a very common item that you're going to have uh, either in some sort of a profile like this, as you can see from the uh, other images on the product brochure, or it could be a much thicker, denser item. You can have an item that has like the 367, the two concentric circles uh, of neoprene material, and uh, et cetera. This is a surface mount, so we're gonna focus pretty much just on, on the surface mount version. There is also a link below this video to what is called the instructions, which is very simple and very straightforward. So the installation of this automatic door bottom, we'll go over that next. Uh, we'll just go through a step-by-step -step, uh, and then dovetail into uh, the uh, comment about ordering a custom length. Okay, so the installation. Uh, how to install. All the surface and semi-mortised units must be mounted on the push side of the door. They always have to be mounted on the push side of the door. There uh, is no provision for an automatic door bottom to be mounted on the pull side. The brass adjusting nut must be on the hinge side and should not be adjusted until the unit has been mounted. What that means is the state in which it comes to you when you remove it from the packaging, leave it like that. This one I have kind of turned out about five revolutions. Don't do that. Just leave it where it sits for right now. The next thing to do is to trim it or to cut it to the exact length that you want. Now, when you go about determining the exact length, you're going to stand on the push side of the door. You'll have a tape measure. You'll pull the door closed. You're going to measure the distance between the two stops. Deduct off of that an eighth of an inch. That is the net length that you need to cut this to. Now, having said all that, if you want us to cut it, indicate that net size in the comment field when you're ordering the item, and we'll ship it out to you that way. The logic is, 
the factory is cutting these from extrusions anyway. They can just as easily cut it to 35 and, you know, an eighth of an inch or whatever number you need rather than 36. So that will save you that trouble. Um, then, assuming you're going to trim it in the field, you never trim this side of the, this side. You never trim this side. You trim hinge side. You trim the lock side. Now, there is a telltale sign here that tells us where the inner mechanism is. And that telltale sign is a screw right here. You're allowed, let's just say safely, two inches to cut it down. You can realistically cut a bit more off of these, but just figure on two inch. If you need to get to 33 inch, don't order a 36, order a 34, or even better, order it the exact size you want. Now, the reason that you wouldn't is because you'll say, well, the job site's an hour away, that's a two hour trip, and I'd rather just cut them when I'm there. And that's understood. But you'll have to have an idea of how wide the doors are. So be within a couple of inches. Um, optimum clearance, going to step four, is three eighths of an inch between the bottom of the unit and the sill. So now you've got the length cut, and now you know where to position it off the sill, and then you're ready to mark holes, okay, and continue with your installation aspect. Final adjustment. After a unit has been mounted, turn the adjusting nut in and out until closing door pushes down the neoprene seal and makes contact with the sill. This is the fun part of the item where you get to see how it actually works. We can emulate all that here uh, without having to trim it and position it on the door and get it nailed or screwed down. I'm rotating the plunger counterclockwise. That makes it stick out further from the housing, as you can see. That is connected to a flat spring. That flat spring resides within the housing, and it's connected over here by that screw. That's why you can't cut on the other side of the screw, because there's inner mechanism there. Now, the neat thing about the flat spring is that it's really simple. It's just a piece of, of, of metal that when it's compressed, well, it's going to belly. That's the only way a flat spring can go. It will, it will belly. Now, imagine when your door is open, and because the brass adjusting nut is connected to the flat spring and its natural state is flat and straight, this will be extended. When you compress this, it forces the spring to belly, and that bellying action is what forces the bottom to drop. So while I can do it with my finger, you can imagine that when the door is open, this is extended. When you push the door closed, the last few degrees of closing is where the plunger makes contact with the frame. This has nowhere to go but in, and that action forces the bottom to drop as a result of the bellying spring. And here's what it looks like. So with my finger on here, and they're, they're hard to do with your hand, but they're not impossible. So when I push against it, you'll see how it drops down like that. Now, this is not what it looks like when it drops down because we're not emulating an actual field condition. An actual field condition is such that, sure, it drops down like a guillotine, but an actual field condition is my thumb acting as the sill. So when I push that in and it counters my thumb, what happens is, is it comes out and drops the other side because I've restricted it over here, okay? So the net effect of that is the hinge side drops and when it makes contact, it stops. Then the rest of it comes down. And what's great about that is your sill might be a little out of level, and it likely is. Doesn't matter with this. It's just going to stop and bam. It'll cover the entire situation really nice. That is, in essence, how all automatic door bottoms work. That's just how they are. You've got varieties of sizes, applications like we talked about earlier, finishes like we talked about earlier. Uh, seal material, as we talked about earlier. Um, but the bottom line principle is exactly what we just went through. Some are fire rated, some are lead lined, some are for acoustical deadening, some are just to keep the wind and, and the critters out. Um, but all automatic door bottoms work like I just indicated. Now I like the zero line of automatic door bottoms because there's a lot of additional thinking that has gone into a lot of this stuff and a lot of their base models. And for instance, what you're going to see in the diagram, and I don't know that I'll be able to actually show it to you. Well, yeah, I think I can. 
Yeah, I can, I can, I can show that to you. This model has, and I can, without damaging it, push it down. Has right there that black spacer. What happens is the one complaint that I've heard about these, and this is one out of twenty-five thousand, is that when the door is opened, you hear that clanking. And the truth of the matter is you do. That piece of black material is in there to deaden that, that sound. And it's really never quite so severe. Depends on how you open the door. If you crash through the door, it'll clank more. Um, but if you open the door normally, it's really more of a gradual lifting, so it's not very noisy. But in all fairness, the one complaint I've heard in 20 plus years is, is that. And the client kept it anyway. Um, You've got different materials that insulate. You've got different properties of how you've got points of in, insul, uh, uh, deadening points where sound can't get through and out and around. The 351 AA, uh, the 351 is a very common uh, model by Zero, and um, can be used on any application, especially an application where you have, um, you know, you might have a fire rated application that you need this to work with. And it will certainly do that. Uh, there's no doubt about it. The reference to the black insert piece of plastic that's in there, you can see it's that horizontal bar with a U underneath it. That's what's in there to help deaden that sound. Okay. Now, fasteners are included. You're going to get three or four of these, whatever you, whatever you will need. And that is obviously for the holes. You can see them all the way across. There's four of them. You're also going to get a little plastic dimple, and that is going to pressure fit inside of here so that it is doing less damage to the frame. In my opinion, if you have a wood frame, and this model does not include a provision for this, but go to Home Depot or whatever. Uh, editor of this video, don't say Home Depot. Say, go to the general hardware store. Um, get yourself like a number 14 wood screw, really short, and countersink the area of the frame where this is going to be making contact with constantly. Over time, that plunger, that piece of brass, is going to divot the frame. Um, and putting a piece of metal there, like a large, very short screw that you can get installed and just flush, will keep that frame uh, performing flawlessly all along. Then, one a thought that may have occurred to you is that you're going to need two end plates. One with the hole and one without. Well, you know which side the hole goes on. The side that's got the plunger and the other side is the same. And that is going to fit over that. You're going to screw it down and give it a really nice dress appearance. And for that, you're going to get four little screws because you need two for each that are going to thread right into these little ears here and on the other side. Here and here. Okay making a very finished installation of this item. Dimensionally, um, important to know, this is not a small unit at all. There are smaller ones. But you know, when you've got something substantial like this happening, you need a lot of, a lot of room to fit it. You've got basically 1 in 13 16 overall height. And then you've got a thickness of the material of just under 3 quarter inch. OK? And again, uh, we can make these lengths for you, cut them to length for you. Zero would be happy to do that. And speaking of Zero, they are, they are a full line manufacturer of all things commercial weather stripping related. And in my opinion, they stand alone uh, in regards to a, the comprehensive offering of unique solutions that they bring to the industry. Um, a lot of engineering, a lot of thought, I, from what I look and see in their catalog over the years, tells me that someone over there is really analyzing the problems. And uh, it's a pleasure to be a distributor. There's great technical service, great customer service, as a matter of fact. So if you have any questions on the Zero 351 AA automatic door bottom or any other Zero product, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you very much.